To hit the books, the only weekly realistic fantasy booking podcast at the end of its season three. This isn't our season three finale, but it's the, the penultimate episode of season three, hosted by only us, Ryan Nightsey, and my friend, my co host, Mikey Manfredi. Mikey, how you doing, bud? I'm doing good. Uh ready to ready to put the sunset on season three with Hell in a Cell. Uh what a way sending, to go out. Sending, we're ascending season three straight to hell, and season four will rise up in its place. Like a phoenix rising out of the like ashes. A phoenix. Yes, we uh, we pushed the draft back, the WWE draft back to beyond uh, Hell in a Cell, because that would just be nonsensical, WWE. And uh, and so we're, because of the draft, we're going to start that as season four. Um, we might do some things. I don't know if we'll do many things different between season three and season four. You know, sometimes Mikey and I we like change up some of the format, but I don't know if Mikey, if there's anything really that needs to be changed. I feel like we sort of settle into a good, good sphere here. Yeah. Um, I agree. I like, I like the way we've been rolling. Yeah. Maybe some more retribution angles, maybe some more, uh, poop comedy. I think, I think those need to be added more in, but, um, more slapjack, but, uh, and the, and the fans are vehemently, uh, asking for detective more detective truth of course well he's the best thing that has come out of the show in generations i guess so because the show is going so long that has generations of us now (laughs) um but we're also coming around out of the collective you listened to last week's episode we we were we were guested by zach batista last weekend because we were all three of us were at the collective mikey we're we're you and i are officially a week and a half out Thoughts on the collective, thoughts and feelings, thoughts that of you surface after the collective from people, and any any sort of gatherings of your of your brain. Uh, I had an incredible time. A uh, lot of new, a lot of new wrestlers I've never seen wrestle before. Uh, just super, super fun all together. Just have had a great weekend with you guys. Had a great five. Had a great couple of days in Atlanta. <laughs> super fun. Um, and I just, to, I just want to say this now, Mikey, it sounds like you have a little bit of the sniffles. Is there anything we should be worried about? No, it's just a cold. No worries. No just worries. a little bit of a cold. It might be coughing a little bit, but any cough will probably end up cutting out anyway. So you won't hear them. Perfect. The, all th- you will, you will hear me sniffling for sure. All three of us got tested afterwards, especially after the things that came out about the collective afterwards. Yes. Our, all of our tests came back negative. Yeah, just we wanna, are all safe. Just want to put that in there, right in here, right now. Positive before is fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, week and a half out. Is there anything that a moment or match or person that has like we talked about like those immediate takeaways of like who stepped out to us? Is there anyone or anything a week after a week and a half afterwards that like you remember like oh this was really cool or a wrestler that you really enjoy that you want to see more of or have all have already started seeking out more of uh yes actually i for independent waters the most recent episode calvin tankman was a uh a wrestler that i dove into because uh i thought he was awesome at the collective so i watched calvin tankman versus myron reed and that match was pretty good but the camera work was awful <laughs> <laughs> and you hear more thoughts with the camera. The wrestlers on... were great. The camera work was shit. <laughs> Calvin, I, I, Calvin Tankman has been a guy that's been like slowly creeping up in independence and like has done a lot in the pandemic. I would argue, but at the same vein, it like the collective really felt like a coming out party for him in a lot of ways. Like he had a yeah. lot of great moments, a lot of great spots. I mean, he wasn't at Effie's big gay brunch for his coming out party. I guess I guess he got me there. Uh, I man, don't I have egg on my Listen, face? You set up the, you set up you the did. joke. You did set me. I did set you up quite well for that. Dang it! Dang it! Um, Tankman Tankman had had a lot of great showings. I I distinctly just look back and remember him walking out for Bloodsport, and like. Oh. The weird, I, I thought it was weird, but like I, looking back on it, it wasn't that weird based on his weekend. But just like that, the pop that he got 
from walking out at Bloodsport. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just look, think back on it. It was just a huge pop. And, you know, he's hyping up the crowd as well, like ch- calling for more chants. But it's just like, man, he he's he was calling for it. And he, he did a great pop. Um, definitely, I was going to say pop of the night, but that's not, not correct because John Moxley was there. But <laughs> that doesn't count. <laughs> that doesn't count. John Moxley um, and Orange Cassidy do not count to me as pops towards wrestlers because they were default going to get a big pop. That's true. Um, I also was not watching it because I'm incredibly hind, but uh, on the latest AEW Dark, KTB of Warbeast was on there. And I was like, yeah. And apparently people are praising him on Twitter. And I was like, yes, let's let's get Shane Mercer next week and then let's get a tag match with Warbeast. Nice. I'm I'm telling you, we we were fantasy booking in the car afterwards. I want I want to I want a heel faction of War Beast with KTB, War- Shane Mercer, and Warhorse. Put them up Iron, against the Iron Rascals. Beast and Warhorse. Give it to me. Give was it Iron Beast? What am I saying? War Beast. War Beast War is Beast. the War Beast. War Beast, is, War Beast is their name after they have Warhorse. Like, of course, there we go. War Beast. War Beast is the fat. Iron Beast is the tag team. War Beast is the faction. There we go. I'm glad you clarified for me. But to put them up against all three of the Rascals, that's what I want. Yeah. That's what I want. That if I, This is why I need to be an independent wrestling promoter. <laughs> uh, this these, these are the many reasons why. Um, speaking of wrestling promoter, Mikey, uh, like we said, we're rounding up season three, so why don't we end out strong? We have one final show, the go-home show before Hell in a Cell, Mikey. I am excited. I feel like I did a very good card, a very good go home card. I feel like I feel like go home cards this card seem... is weird for me. <laughs> Interesting. I, I was going to ask why you say that, but I, I guess we'll find out yeah. soon. But I, I I feel like go home cards are kind of difficult sometimes. Uh, I don't They're know. Always so hard. I don't know what it is about them that make them difficult. Do you have any any ideas or recollections of why they could? why they might be harder than usual i think it's because it's like you need you need like a you need to make a blow off for the blow off you know you need to make like a big epic moment to get into that match but you want to also save the big epic moment for the match so it's like hard to balance of like getting people hype Mm -hmm. and then like keeping that hype into going into the 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 pay-per-view where you want all that hype to be yes you don't you don't want to climax too early (laughs) what (laughs) that's a that's a setup for my new hit podcast g1 and only where we talk about the g1 climax (laughs) every other week just just the fact just the you don't want to climax too early i'm just gonna get like we're just gonna put like a a compilation of stuff that we said completely out of context no (laughs) Don't do this to me. <laughs> oh, don't do this to me. Uh, but you don't. But you, you, like, you're right. You, you don't want to get like. You want to build up the hype, but you don't want to like have the top of the mountain right there. The go home. You want to actually be the match at the pay per view and sort of balancing those expectations versus that. I also find that like you also have to have like several hooks. You know, for every single match. Like, you're basically... We're telling, like, multiple different stories here. So, you need, like, kind of, like, a hook for every story to build into the pay-per-view, you know? hmm You don't have to do every single match, but you know what I mean. Like, there's there's got to be hooks or stories, something that'll buy into the pay-per-view, that sort of idea. Um, But, yeah, there's something weird about them. But you said you have a weird show, and I'm very much excited about mine. But So, let's get into it. Uh, last week we had guest Zach on, so we didn't go over who the winners were of t- two weeks prior to now. Uh, so last week we said, Mikey, that the winner or the loser of two weeks card and the loser of last week's card will hit be hit with a double uh, hit the book style randomizer. Uh, right before the pay-per-view. Wonderful. Right before the pay-per-view. Uh, so the results are in. Two weeks ago, uh, the winner was Raw. And uh, and last week's episode, it was tied between Raw and NXT. Wow, so SmackDown double lost. It was tied up until uh, friend of the show, UTT Rob, 
said that he would have voted for Raw if the poll did not end. But, Rob, you got to get onto the podcast early. We can talk about that, Mikey, about extending the polls. I only have it for two days. Do you th- we'll, we'll talk about that next. But, Rob, you got to get onto the polls. You've got to be, you gotta be a first-day listener, Rob. I mean, that's not, that's not my problem. Um, I'm joking. I love you, Rob. Um, but he said he would have voted for Raw, which meant Raw would then get the win, overall win, which means Raw wins for both nights. Ryan really running away with it these days. Yes, really running away with it. So that means we'll hit a double randomizer on you. Um, That's what I need to read for the pay-per-view. This is why I can never win Book It. <laughs> it wouldn't be a go-home show if Mikey didn't get randomized on. <laughs> <laughs> that this needs to stop being a trend <laughs> oh, where i just man. get absolutely destroyed in the go home show maybe that should be the season four can i have, can I have like one pay-per-view card that goes as planned one time please maybe that should be the season four hook is that uh the winner gets randomized <laughs> i don't know about that that's fair i feel like i yeah no. um Okay, well then let's get into it, Mikey. Um, I feel like you should go first. And would you like the randomization? When would you like the randomizations? I can give it to you both afterwards. Split them up one at give the beginning, him, one at the end. Give it to me both after. We'll, we'll figure it. I give can... it to me both after, so I can think about it while you're presenting. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. Or I can hit you hit you with one right in the middle of your card. <laughs> <laughs> just like as I'm in the middle of talking, just be like, "All right, anyway, randomizer." Anyway, someone's injured for forty months. Uh... <laughs> Ah, oh, jeez. All right. Well, since I'm going first, we got the show opener for SmackDown. The announcers are introducing the show when suddenly they get interrupted over their microphones and they say we need to cut them backstage because something's going on back there. Mm-hmm. Tommaso Ciampa and Kevin Owens are brawling and making a mess of the backstage area. They end up brawling towards GM Page's office, who steps out and gets security and refs to break them up. And Page says, guys, calm down. Save the animosity for Sunday. And then she pauses for a second and says, actually, you know what? If you really want to fight that badly, you two are going to have a match tonight. Non-title. But whoever wins gets to pick the stipulation for your match at Hell in a Cell. But I swear, if you two even think about fighting again before this match tonight, (laughs) the consequences will be so dire that you'll want to quit the company. Deal? Deal? The two nod their head and walk away in their separate directions. Okay. Uh, 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 Setting up our main event tonight, Tommaso Ciampa versus Kevin Owens. A hot start to this this SmackDown. Okay, so if I'm getting this straight, uh, the mom of SmackDown, GM Page, yes. uh, yells at her two boys to stop roughhousing. Putting her, putting her foot down. Stop roughhousing in this this whole whole. Stop, stop, ra- stop roughhousing backstage. Go roughhouse in the ring where you're supposed to do it. But they are if they roughhouse anywhere besides the ring before the main event matchup, then they will both, she'll both basically fire them. Either that, it was more like, it was like, I, I would, the, the specific consequences were going to be like, Champa gets his title stripped or something, okay. and Owens like won't get a match. Owens gets Blair drafted. Like that. Yeah, gets drafted at all. <laughs> but just like I just wanted, I, I wanted, I, but then I was like, let me just say consequences and leave it up to people's imaginations. That's fair. I think it's funnier that way. Um. Then okay, and then the winner of the main event matchup, non-title matchup tonight, will choose their stipulation yes. for Hell in a Cell. Presumably not Hell in a Cell, but could be a Hell in a Cell matchup. Could be. I mean, it's already there. It's already there. It's hanging above the ring. Interesting. Okay, I'm on they board. Already have it. I'm on board. What, what else right. you got? Match number one. We got Roderick Strong versus Robert Roode. Ooh. Uh, and Roderick Strong ends up picking up the victory because they have a match going into Hell in a Cell. So I figured to get a uh, one-on-one match. And later on, I do have Kyle O'Reilly versus Dolph Ziggler. So. Okay, so is that the I don't I haven't written it down here, but is that the official announcement that at Hell in a Cell? Yes, it it it, it def, I I thought I announced it at some point, but I guess I didn't. But yeah, the official match is Strong and O'Reilly versus Ziggler and Rude for the titles. You might have you might have announced it, but I just haven't written it down yet. 
um, for the titles, for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. That should be a good match. I believe I have four out of five matches right now, yes? Uh, I have written down Kevin Owens versus Ciampa and the tag titles. I don't have it. I'm missing three more matches. Uh, well, we got we we definitely announced Adam Cole versus Drew McIntyre for, in Hell in a Cell for the title. Okay, well, I'll take your word for it. I got announced last week, two or, two or three weeks ago. I honestly don't remember. <laughs> I definitely did it though, because I, I remember the I remember the promo. Uh, yeah, it was last week. Yeah, Universal Title and Hell in a Cell match. Okay, was there any other matches I was missing? Uh, I think that was it. Uh, Ember Moon versus Sasha Banks. Ember Moon versus Sasha Banks. The SmackDown tag team title. Not tag team. <laughs> SmackDown Women's Championship. Okay. Got four of your five. Okay, go on. Okay. Got it? <laughs> we're all good? Yes, we're all good. You're all, all set. All right, so we got Roger Strong versus Robert Roode, which Roger Strong picks up the victory. Gets the win for Undisputed Era. Uh, after that, we have a segment with Ruby Riot in the locker room, and she looks like she's mulling over a big decision. O'Reilly knocks on the door and makes his way in and sits down next to Riot. Big What's brother, on your mind? Big brother Kyle O'Reilly. This is, okay, if you say big brother <laughs> Kyle O'Reilly, like you're joking, but I promise you this is the most big brother little, there's like the, there's like the most brother-sister moment between the two of them literally ever. It is just like, you'll see. I'm ready for it. Sits down next to Riot. What's on your mind? Ruby responds. I just feel like, <laughs> literally, I just feel like you guys are doing so much. Like, you you and Strong are tag champs. Cole's about to have a match for the Universal title. And where am I? In the back of the line for the women's title? We said we were going to take over, and I'm just not pulling my weight on this team. O'Reilly looks at her and responds, well, I think you've been a huge part of this team since you've joined, but I get it. Losing streaks suck. We've all had them. But we know that's not you. You're a fighter, and you're going to fight. You'll find your way back to winning. Riot smiles, says, thanks, thanks, Kyle. I think I just need a break from the pressure, you know? I'm just, I'm going to step away from Era for a while and get my stuff together. Whoa! Nothing, nothing against you guys, of course. I think it's just what I need right now. Kyle says, I understand. It's been a blast, Riot. See you later. Kyle sticks his hand out for a handshake. Ruby accepts. She says, See you later. Ruby leaves. Kyle smiles. Oddly a wholesome moment for Undisputed Era. Wow. Wow. Just a very out of... I, I, I don't know why. I just really felt like writing like a very out of character moment in Era. Yeah, for, for Kyle O'Reilly especially. Like, like... Usually like the really big cocky heels just having like just like a an actual just like wholesome moment between but in the team. Very about to make somebody's about to make undisputed era babyface faction. <laughs> Holy crap! Oh yeah, Riot God. Riot says she's stepping away for a bit. So uh, Ruby Riot, it's not it, it's not a it's not a goodbye. It's a see you later. You know. Yes, yes, and it's concerning, obviously, with the draft coming up. That you know who if she whether or not she stays or not. Yeah, that was also kind of to set up for the draft coming, just in case I did lose Riot. Mm-hmm. That's fair. I always like setting up uh, for draft storylines just in case. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm like I've I, I've been thinking about that over the past couple of cards where I'm just like, well, what happens? Because now if I lose Ryan, it makes sense. Yes, which is what I've been doing for other storylines. Or if I lose Era and keep Ryan, either way, it makes sense. Yes. Um, I like that. I I like this little subtle big brother. It's interesting that's also only Kyle O'Reilly, not none of the other. Well, Roger members. Strong just had a match, and Adam Cole is in a weird dark place right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. These are all fair points. And Bobby Fish is still injured. <laughs> <coughs> These are all fair points. Uh, well, I liked it. I liked it. All right. Well, after that, we have match number two: Cedric Alexander and Mustafa Ali versus the Street Profits. However, this match doesn't end with a pin or submission. It ends when Zayn and Carrillo attack Ali and Alexander and the Street Profits. They shove the Street Profits out of the ring and talk right to Ali and Alexander. Zayn says, you thought we were done with you two? You've embarrassed us for way too long, and it's time for us to make a stand. We're done taking your garbage, and we are going to destroy you at hell in a cell. Oh. Zayn and Carrillo walk away. Oh, geez. Setting up for my pre-show match at Hell in the Cell, Zayn and Carrillo versus Cedric Alexander and Mustafa Ali. 
Uh, and just a straight tag? Just a straight tag. Okay. So, same as in Humberto Carrillo. We have the Money in the Bank briefcase on the line. Uh, <laughs> in a tag team match. In a tag team match. I believe that was our pitch at one point. It was that without everyone believed that's what was going to happen with Otis's Money in the Bank briefcase. Um, and then that never happened. <laughs> and then and then they made a lunchbox out of it, and that's as far as they got. <laughs> uh, okay, there we go. Another a solid pre-show match. Sami Zayn, Mustafa Ali, Humberto Carrillo, Cedric Alexander. I like it. I like it. Yeah, it's. I, I'm very excited for that match. I like the. Uh, I like the, the two new tag teams kind of coming out of this feud, and Cedric Alexander and Ali, and uh, Sami Zayn and Korea. Yeah, and it's a good spot to continue this sort of match that sort of have become more of higher profile, and continue it on the pre-show mm-hmm. where they're, they're two, they're four, they're two new tag teams basically. Um, yeah. And whether or not they cement themselves as a tag team uh, is up for question. But uh, I mean, a win here could potentially mean two people staying together, moving into the tag team division as a permanent unit. All right. After that, we have a video package. The announcers introduced a video from last week after SmackDown went off the air. <sighs> okay. Braun Strowman is backstage when he gets run into by none other. Than our truth, <laughs> still, still with the cardboard title. Who is not paying attention to where he is going because he is too busy looking through a magnifying glass. <laughs> Strowman turns around slowly and menacingly and glares Truth dead in the face, and then suddenly just flips a switch and has a gigantic grin on his face and says, "Hey, Truth, what's going on?" Like he like turns around like all scary. They just like. Hey, Truth, what's up? What's up, bud? Like, like really big, happy. Big slap <laughs> really on happy, the back really of the chair. Yeah. He's like, hey, Truth, what's going on? Hey, Braun, I'm still on the case of my missing 24-7 championship. I, it got lost a few weeks ago, and I think someone may have stolen it. Braun says, and he leads. <laughs> well, Mojo has been avoiding my questioning, but other than that, not really. You see anything? Uh, Braun, like, gives him, like, the little, like, come here like thing and whispers and kind of like whispers he's like well between you and me maverick was skulking around looking pretty proud of himself earlier maybe go see what's up with that truth responds hmm maverick i don't know him but there is that rock star guy who i know might have it i'll go ask for him (laughs) truth runs to investigate his hunch That's the end of the video package. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> oh man, Mikey. Is this what the people want? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Detective Truth, cardboard twenty four seven. Drake Maverick, Rockstar Spud reference. Oh, yeah. I had to get it in there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right. Well, after that, we have match number three, Kyle <laughs> O'Reilly versus Dolph Ziggler. And Dolph Ziggler actually picks up the victory. Ayo. 50-50 booking, baby. Ayo. <laughs> but I like, the, I like the fact that the singles victory went to Roderick Strong. Um yeah i i I did like that i liked i i think i think i like the two winners of these matches a lot i like roger strong getting a victory because he just came back recently Uh, i piped him back up a little bit and i like ziggler getting the victory here because ziggler has also been in uh, a a little rough in singles action yeah well plus also that um uh roger strong like right before he left he was on like the united states title match literally he had a match set up yeah. So him winning a singles competition also makes sense. Don't worry, that will come back into play soon. Him him having that uh, title opportunity, I guess. Roderick Strong is like the Swiss Army knife of Undisputed Era. He really is. He could do anything. I mean, so I guess all of them could. I mean, realistically, Kyle Riley is there as well, but I feel like Roderick yeah. Strong. I mean, Roderick Strong and Kyle Riley are just two great wrestlers. Just at the end of the day. I agree. All right. Well, after that, we have another segment. 
Truth finds Maverick's locker. Wait, room. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stop here. Why are you like upset about it? Like, what's the? I'm, not, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to like get my composure together because I don't want to just start laughing in the middle of me oh. saying it, in the middle of me like reading this. So I'm just trying to like keep my composure. I'm not like it, the sigh is not me being upset. Okay, the sigh good. is me like getting myself together. Okay, good. I wanted, I wanted that to be clear. I was like, this is good. I want to know what I want to know what's up here. Yeah, right. it's me getting myself together. Truth finds Maverick's locker room and he says, "Huh, I guess while I'm here, I should check out that guy Braun mentioned." He knocks. He knocks on the door. What an idiot! <laughs> see, do you see why I have to like breathe before I read these? He knocks on the door and Maverick opens it just enough for us to see his head. He says, "Who's there?" Truth. Truth says, "Wait, Rockstar guy, what are you doing? What are you doing in this Maverick guy's locker room?" <laughs> Maverick says, "Uh, one sec." He comes out clearly holding something behind his back and says so what's up truth truth says well my 24 7 title went missing and i'm looking for it uh last week and 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 last week braun told me that i can find some maverick guy over here who might have it (laughs) maverick is clearly sweating and he says what me no way i wouldn't me (laughs) haha good one (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> truth truth stares him down for like a second and just goes oh well i guess this is a dead end truth turns around to leave and maverick hits him over the back of the head with a 24 7 belt and runs away truth is knocked out and we head back to smackdown <laughs> oh man drake maverick so it My turns dear. out it turns out drake maverick stole the 24 7 championship he didn't didn't win it. No, stole it. <laughs> yes, he stole the twenty four seven championship. Are you stealing my Roman Reigns Keith Lee storyline? <laughs> no. What? No. no. What? Who, what, what? What did what did Drake Maverick say? What? No. You no, know why? Me? Because you know why? Because our truth didn't get kidnapped. <laughs> If only anyway, a detective, detective next, truth. N- next segment because we only have four matches tonight because it's a very segment heavy SmackDown. Mm-hmm. Moon Moon is backstage in the medical office when an interviewer walks in and asks asks her if she's going to be ready for Hell in a Cell this Sunday after what Sasha did to her last week. Ember laughs and she says, "Oh, this this is nothing. Sasha is going to do a lot more than that to stop me from ripping that title away from her. That championship is what drives me now. All I see." All I see anymore is that championship in my sleep, when I wake up, when I eat breakfast, when I'm in the ring, when I'm when I'm working out. It's all I can think about, and it's consuming me. I need this more than anything, and some stupid arm injury isn't going to get in my way. Whoa. And Ember Moon storms off. Whoa. Ember Moon. Ember Moon coming out hot and heavy with this one. Oh, yeah. Coming out real hot and heavy with this one. She is... She is not uh, taking this match lightly. No, uh, I like to see it. I like to see that little that additional fire come from Ember Moon, if you will. Um, <laughs> fire from Ember, good one. <laughs> fire from Moon. <laughs> the moon's on fire. You mean the sun? Excuse. <laughs> you made me laugh, and now I'm dying. Is an Ember Moon just a sun? <laughs> Whoa, man. That's crazy. <laughs> you gotta think about this for the next ten Ember hours. Ember Moon, Sun. Whoa. I don't know what that means at all for her character, but uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> is that what kind of? Because it's a, uh, you know, I was just like, yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah, I I like this. I like the hype into this match. Um, yeah, I'm more excited about the result of this match to see what happens. Uh, for draft reasons. <laughs> Well, after that segment is our main event of the evening. We have Tommaso Ciampa taking on Kevin Owens, and the winner gets to pick the stipulation for their match at Hell in a Cell. And the winner of this match is Kevin Owens. Okay, and the stipulation is that it's for the Money in the Bank briefcase, right? Against Tommaso Ciampa. Yes. If he beats Ciampa, he steals Sami Zayn's briefcase. Of course. Because the He's... conspiracy against Sami Zayn continues. 
Owens grabs a mic and he says, after he wins, he says, I don't want to just beat Tommaso Ciampa any any old way. I don't want to just pin him. I don't want to just submit him. I want to put him through hell. No, can't say that right now. Hold on. (laughs) I didn't actually write out this promo. Clearly, I'm just winging it. (laughs) I don't want to just beat Tommaso Ciampa any old way. I want to do it as brutally and as painfully as possible. So Tommaso Ciampa, me and you are going to have a fight for that United States Championship. And it is going to be a tables match. Tables match. Tommaso Ciampa versus Kevin Owens. Two ob- objects these both of these men know very well. Yes. Um, oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. I like how you've been doing a lot more stipulation matches as well. I, I appreciate really that. Matches are fun. They're, I mean, that's fair. They are always fun. You can never go wrong with a little nice little stipulation. Yeah, and a pay per view's coming up, so might as well go big. This is true. This is true. Um, well, there you go. Uh, that is SmackDown. Uh, thoughts, comments, and concerns. Uh, I liked this. For a second, I, I thought you were asking me that, and I was like, oh, my God, I've never been asked this question about my own card before. <laughs> Do you have answers? I mean... Uh, thoughts? I thought it was good. Uh, comments? I thought it was good. Concerns? Maybe it's bad? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was good. I thought it was good. It, was, it wasn't as... No, no. Concerns? Randomizer? <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Uh, I thought it was good. I feel like um, it was the only concerns I had were like there, like there was like some like weird moments and stuff that was just like I, I liked all the weird moments, but it was always like they were just setting up for some other things. Um, like I told I, you, this card was weird for me. Yes, yes, uh, but I still think it was good. I still enjoyed it. Um, I liked. Kevin Owens, Tommaso Ciampa stuff. I like the individual tag teams. The actual tag team ending in uh, disqualification, setting up there. Um, yeah, it was good. No no Adam Cole, no Drew McIntyre on this show. Maybe that's a concern of mine. Um, but I think a strong card uh, nonetheless. Yeah, I, I like I think I, I liked it. I, I thought it was it was weird. It was it's it felt weird at first, but then just presenting it it felt much better. I agree. I agree to that. Um especially because I was like a little concerned about how the uh the R Truth segments would play out. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> well, it's time to get randomized, and like I said at the top of the show, you're gonna have to get two so you're gonna take your lumps here, Mikey, and get hit with a oh, randomizer man. twice. Uh I've already rolled the the first one here for you. What do we got? Reorder the entire card. Oh man. <laughs> Reorder the entire card. Pretty self explanatory. Uh I'm, I'm we're, if you don't know, audience, we have the polls every single Friday that comes out with an episode. Um you can vote on which card you thought was better. Was it SmackDown? Was it Raw? Um uh, and obviously you get to decide which is better. The loser of those polls get hit with the randomizer. Mikey lost two weeks in a row. Uh, so he has to get hit with a randomizer. The second one is f- hilarious and also um, mostly useless. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's steal a superstar. I thought it was going to be reorder the card again. <laughs> no, it is steal a superstar. Steal oh, one superstar man. from the other's roster. Oh, but, but yeah, the, the draft is coming up. Huh? <laughs> the draft is coming up. So this is utterly useless to me. Uh, I don't know why, uh, I, uh, we were doing this, but hey, we're doing it. I'm stealing a superstar, uh, who's going to be moved to Raw, and whether or not they stay there is on their own accord. But, you know, I can basically just pick whoever I want, so I'm going to pick Finn Balor. <laughs> That's fair. I'm upset about that, because I had plans, but I'll get him back. You can get, yeah, you get him back in the draft, who cares? Because I get a first round draft pick. <laughs> this is true. This is true. I'm just gonna steal Finn Balor because I don't care. I'm taking it's him. like it's like one of those things. It's like Finn Balor traded to Raw. Finn Balor back on SmackDown like two days later. It's like everyone's like, why? <laughs> yeah, I'm just stealing him for literally no Everyone reason. Everyone on just Twitter because. just says why. 
I'm stealing for literally no reason, knowing I because I was just looking at it, I'm like I can pick anyone. Do I have any idea what to well, do now with Finn you can Balor? Have a Finn Balor moment at Hell in the Cell. I could have a Finn Balor moment. I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I got nothing. I got nothing for. Her. I guess it's true. Maybe I should be more conscientious of who I pick here, because I could actually make a moment and then hopefully can keep them on the show and like build something out of them. Exactly. So maybe let me let me think. Let me. Can I? Do you mind if I think for a half more second? Go ahead. <laughs> think about like. Hold on. Maybe I actually need need to pick somebody. Um, that is a fair, fair and reasonable choice. <sighs> let me look at my roster here and who. Let me see what my Helena sell. What would make the most fun sense of it all? Um, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, I guess actually that might make the most sense so let me look over here okay yeah i think this makes sense i think this is a good choice all right what do you got i'm stealing asuka what no okay i'm taking asuka off your hands it's like that meme oh no anyway well no i'm not taking asuka off your hands wait no i take that back i'm not taking asuka off your hands. pick one I, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't actually matter. Now that you think about it, it does not matter like at all who I pick. So I'm just going to pick. I'm going to do it out of, out of the memes. I'm taking our truth. <laughs> no, I actually had something for him. In Hell in a Cell. Oh, really? <laughs> I was going to have him in a segment. <laughs> It was like a quick, stupid little segment I was gonna have him in. I'm doing it for like, the memes. Like, like, like him and him and Drake Maverick were gonna interrupt the match because he was gonna be chasing Maverick down for the title. Well, we can still do that. It's a pay per view and it's the 24 seven title, so we can still do that. That's fair. I can agree. As as the owner, not, I don't like the, that phrase. As the GM of of Raw, uh, I think I agree with leasing out our truth for a segment for SmackDown. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Just letting me borrow him for one second. Yes, and then you can immediately take him back in the draft. <laughs> I just want to, I'm just doing it for the memes, brah. I'm just doing it for the memes. I think it's funny if I take our truth here. Um, you have to reorder your entire card. Are you going to take the time to uh, put have, it together? You know what's funny? Out of everything from Hell in a Cell, the bit I have planned out the most is the R Truth Drink Maverick bit. <laughs> I love to hear that. You love to hear that the the most effort has been put into the dumbest shit. It's so the idea I have is so stupid. That's like and my so time. dumb. I love. I can't wait. I I'm glad I'm leasing him. Um, that's not leasing, but what do you, I think it's like something about like independent contracting where you can. I don't know. Anyways, uh, you have to also reorder your entire card, Mikey. Are you working on that? Do you need more time and stuff? Uh yeah, it's it's weird. Um I think this is what I'm going to do though. Okay. Can I what did we say how many segments are we allowed to keep in their places? Cuz I think the opener needs to stay. I think it I think we I said I think the opener and the main event need to stay. I think we said that at least half or more has to change. Okay. Which is what you have nine segments here so four or five have to move around okay so the opener the opener and the main event are staying where they are because i need those to be where they're at fair uh i'm gonna make o'reilly ziggler match one i'm gonna i'm gonna basically switching the two undisputed era matches um that's an easy easy trade yeah i'm gonna put I'm going to move the Moon backstage segment and switch that with Cedric Alexander and Ali. With the Cedric Alexander Ali match? Yes. Okay. Um and I'm going to switch the video package and the riot segment. The video package and the riot segment. Okay. That is definitely more than half. That is definitely more than half of your card. I believe that is... Did you move every... I think you moved everything except for the R-Truth. This, this, this second R-Truth segment, yeah. 
Yes. And the main event and the beginning. Where's the first R True segment? Oh, it's the, the video, video, package. video package where you just move it. Uh, yeah, you moved all but three things, and that, that counts. You moved more than half. Good job. Reor- the card has been reordered. Hmm. Okay, well, there we go. Uh, let's move back over to Monday nights and listen to how Monday Night Raw went down. We opened the show with a singles match, a singles match for the championship, the IC championship, to be exact. Nice. Uh, Sheamus versus MVP. All right. Uh, I'm making I'm making the best with what I got, Zach, and so you yep. kind of screwed up what I did had planned. But uh, so I think this was supposed to be Sheamus versus Ricochet uh, for the Ricochet. title. Yes. Instead, MVP is here. MVP uh, is followed by the LLC, Lashley, Lana, and Cesaro. Oh no. Um. So little little stuff there. Uh, is Intercontinental Championship? When you say followed, is it like they like? As in they're coming with him or they're like stalking him? Uh, coming with him. Okay. Because um, they've been they are in business together, as it were. Um, gotcha. The match the match continues. I the match maybe Sheamus paid them more and they turned on him. No, no, no. Well, I guess that's a storyline. Uh, that's a storyline idea. Um, well, the match goes on and we get some back and forth up until uh, there is a countout victory. And Sheamus wins when MVP gets counted out. Boo. Boo, yeah. MVP MVP up and leaves, basically. And then there's a count out victory awarded to Sheamus. But, MVP just, just leaves? Yep. Like, ah, I don't want this title match. Yep, exactly. Uh, he leaves. LLC then jumps Sheamus from behind. Oh, dang. MVP joins in. It becomes very apparent that this was maybe sort of a plan here. Um, you don't say. Yeah, you don't, you don't say. Uh, but, of course, someone's going to make that save. It's going to be the one and only Ricochet. Uh, Ricochet saving MVP? No, Ricochet's... No, Seamus, saving Seamus? Blah, 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 blah. Yes, he's shaving Seamus. Uh, shaving Seamus? <laughs> shaving Seamus. He's now bald as a baby boy. Um, Ricochet grabs the mic and tells Seamus that he knows that he don't see eye to eye, but tells him, you know, you know what they say. Uh, Ricochet then challenges LLC to a tag match right now with Seamus. Whoa. And that's what we get. A tag match. Seamus and Ricochet versus LLC, Lashley, and Cesaro. So, of course, Lana and MVP in their corner. Uh, match ends when Bobby Lashley pins Seamus. Oh no! Pins the champ. Intercontinental champion. Interesting. Yes. Pins, Very interesting. Pins the intercontinental champion. Big moves from Bobby Lashley. Big moves from the big BL. Big moves from LLC. Uh, thoughts? Thoughts on that, Mikey? I like it. I like how the segment played out. I liked how it started as a title match, and then a rescue, and then a tag, and then as Teddy Long would say, a tag team match player. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, why not? It, it's the classic Paul, Paul Heyman booking. We'll get one <laughs> match, and then you know what? We'll make it a tag match. Perfect. Um, that goes right into the next uh, segment, which is a video package recapping the Nia Jax, Tamina, Bliss, and Cross rivalry. Um, of course, you know, Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax were teammates. Then they Nia Jax sort of was getting tired of being in the shadow of Alexa Bliss, uh, so she broke off and attacked Alexa Bliss, uh, saying that, you know, she's just using Nijax. She's not a good friend. Uh, Nijax teams up with Tamina and ends up winning the Women's Tag Team Championships. Bliss and Cross uh, are become, start becoming sort of a friendship there, a budding friendship uh, where they defeat and, you know, de- defeat a couple people and win some tag team matches together. We get a video package segment friendship compilation of Bliss and Cross to I can't see me loving nobody but you. <laughs> Not I, I feel like that song doesn't fit quite as yet. Like, as like, like you see uh, Bliss like brushing the hair of like a doll, and you see like Nikki Cross like ripping its head off. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, you don't. Then, no, like Bliss like looks into it. They just like. Like, oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> this is this like a 90s sitcom? Yes. <laughs> oh, geez. 
Uh, no. Instead, we get a women's tag team championship match between Bliss Cross and Nia Jax and Tamina. <laughs> Instead of a segment, we get a title match. We get a title match, Playa. Uh, Much better. Yes. A title tag team match, Playa. Teddy Long's wet dream. <laughs> <laughs> featuring the undertaker a tag team title match with the undertaker uh the winner of this match is the team of nia Jax and tamina they retain their women's tag team championships boo yeah big old Our boo. friendship needs to prevail i mean that that's why they need that that compilation so they can become friends they exactly. need that montage. They they are not. They become a better tag team. The reason I say that song doesn't fit that sick that video package doesn't fit quite yet is because I don't think they've necessarily achieved lifelong friends yet. You know, well, that's why you, that's why that's why you need that's why you need the compilation. That's why you need the montage, but, right? But you, you, we can't we can't put and fake footage. A lifelong friendship in thirty seconds. Yeah, but we're not there yet. We don't. We haven't established the lifelong friendship. They barely know each other. I want to see them. The ne- if I if I be able to keep this tag team, then we're going to be seeing more and more <laughs> segments where the two are out doing things together, going to Starbucks. I want to uh, see them. I want to see them at Starbucks drinking lattes, and they both get foam mustaches and they laugh at each other. Exactly. Stop yelling at me. <laughs> You'll get it. Sure, just don't take them <laughs> or draft them yourself to do this goddamn montage. God. Anyways, uh, backstage we get a backstage segment, uh, 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 a very interesting backstage segment featuring Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. Okay. Uh, the two are asked that uh, despite their shit history, there are concerns that they won't be able to con- coexist as a unit tonight. Uh, Mikey, if you don't remember, what I announced last week was that there's going to be a big old 10-man tag match. I it's... thought you were going to say, if you don't remember, Roman <laughs> Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins were on the shield together. If you don't remember, they both were on the shield together and eventually won tag team gold together. <laughs> But of course, Rollins turned his back. <laughs> of course, Rollins turned him back on their shield. Um, no, we have a big old t- 10-man tag. Uh, speaking of Teddy Long, we have a big old 10-man tag in the main event tonight. Edge, yeah, Dana Bryan. Yes, Edge, Dana Bryan, and the New Day versus Seth. That's three, three tag team bouts in a row. Uh, no, there's going to be another match broken up here. Um, well, okay, okay. Uh, but the the 10-man tag is Edge, Daniel Bryan, The New Day versus Seth Rollins, The Disciples, and The Usos. Um, so yes. there is concern that despite their history, uh, the shared histories, there are concerns they won't be able to co- coexist tonight. Roman says that it's quite all right. I have no dog in this fight. Didn't mean to rhyme there, but I have. <laughs> I've removed myself from the equation. Roman said that in canon. Yes. I removed myself from the equation. Uh, I'm more concerned about The Usos. They haven't been holding up their weight of our bargain, and quite frankly, they need to step it up, but they know this. We've already discussed this. Besides, I'm holding down the fort for my WWE, for my WWE championship while Rollins is handling the tag team division. Rollins comments saying that his disciples are hoarding down the Raw tag team division. I'm just guiding them. Seth Rollins continues saying that Edge is someone that the two of them greatly respected growing up, but he has become a pest on this 2020 roster. Now he thinks Daniel Bryan is in his corner. You know, Daniel Bryan is a man that is quite frankly lost. He thinks he's a shepherd, but quite frankly, he's just a goat. Uh, the yeah. two don't. The two don't belong together. And when our groups defeat them tonight, they can watch Helena sell from their living rooms. Damn. I should probably change that to hospital beds. And when I am, I'm going to change that to their hospital beds. Damn. Okay. <laughs> I mean, living rooms was fine, but damn. <laughs> Hey, he's a heel, so uh, I guess heal it up a little bit. Hospital beds. All right, thoughts on that segment? I like it. I like how Roman and Seth have both taken the position of like, hey, I'm just, I'm just here to watch over them, you know? Yes, yes. I've been, I've been consistently using that idea of like a leader is like active. A leader of a group actively helps those beneath them. Mm-hmm. I've been actively trying to push that mentality. Um, I also push the idea here that uh, uh, Roman says that Seth Rollins is handling the tag team division, and Seth clarifies saying that it's his disciples who are doing so. I just want mm-hmm. to point that out uh, just because. Why not? 
Uh, next up, we have a singles match for the number one contenders for the Raw Women's Championship, Liv Morgan versus Sonya Deville. Uh-oh. Uh, if you remember last week, Liv, Liv Morgan said that she was gonna she didn't care what Rhea Ripley had to say or anything. She's also going to move on or whatever, uh, and she's challenging Sonya Deville because she thinks she deserves a shot at Shayna. Uh, but instead, the winner of this match goes to Sonya, it is official at Hell in Cell. It's going to be Shayna Baszler defending her title against Sonya Deville. All right. Uh, next up, we get another segment. It is Aleister Black who comes out and cuts a promo sitting in the middle of the ring, and he's holding the contract to uh, the, his Hell in a Cell match uh, be- between, obviously, him and Bray Wyatt. Uh, Black says that he remembers watching the infamous Hell in a Cell match uh, between Undertaker and Mankind. It was a masterpiece of art and violence. Two men enter, signed their fate to the devil, and tore their bodies apart to win. It wasn't a match. It wasn't a joke. This was a fight for life and death. No championship glory was on the line. Just victory. You see, I sold my soul to the devil long ago. I have lost it all, so this match isn't about my life or death. It's about that option for a man I call friend. And if I have to trade the rest of my form to the demon I share the ring with, then so be it. Sacrifice, sacrificed myself to the gods and the devils. I am Aleister Black, and I have come for what is mine. Uh, suddenly, the lights go out, and they come back on red. The Fiend is standing right behind Aleister Black. Black, Black who is still sitting there uh, cross-legged, uh, turns to look who it is. He then stands up, and stands up slowly, I should say and stares the fiend directly in his eyes, unwavering. Ooh, I like it. The Not f- afraid even a little bit. The fiend sort of cocks his head and then punches Aleister Black into the gut. The fiend goes into the corner, listening to his hurt hand, which I think is just a funny sentence. Uh, then he then charges Aleister Black with a spear. The fiend pummels Aleister Black until Aleister Black begins to bleed the hard way. Yikes. Yikes. Uh, the Fiend then grabs uh, the contract for the match and wipes Alistair's block, Alistair Black's blood all over the contract. Ooh. Signed and sealed with blood. I think this is the second contract that got signed with blood in our universe. <laughs> I think that's correct. I think I've used this before. <laughs> this isn't the first time we've signed a contract in blood in this universe. Was it Roman's blood? I think I've, I think I've done it, right? I feel like I did it. Someone did it. I'll look it up. Uh, he set, uh, uh, Bray Wyatt sets up, or I should say The Fiend sets up Aleister Black for the sister Abigail, but Black reverses it and attempts a spinning fade to Black. The Fiend dodges it and slides out of the ring. The lights go out, and Black is left by himself bleeding. Jeez. Also, I think I think the reason uh, lis- listen to his hurt hand sounds funny is because it sounds like something like a redneck would say in a in like a bar fight when they're like drunk and be like, "Come get it, it's my hurt hand." <laughs> <laughs> now come on, baby, he's with my hurt hand. Got gotcha. you. I got you with my hurt hand. Uh, with my hurt hand. <laughs> oh my god, the hurt hand. I I really don't. I feel like I did it. <laughs> these, these are my hurt hands. <laughs> <laughs> this is my hurt hand. Oh my god, that is such like a such a thing. Um, but yeah, so that's that promo. Moving right into the next match, the main event, it's that 10-man tag, Edge, Dana Bryan, and the New Day versus Rollins, Disciples, and the Usos. Uh, okay. Roman Roman Reigns with the WWE Championship that is not his, it is on commentary for this match. Um, you know, he's out of the equation, but he's still there watching the Usos, like he said. Um, the match is a lot of back-and-forth action, hot tag team action between these two factions, I should say. Uh, action between the factions. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Hot actions between the factions. All right. However, during the match, uh, Rollins, the disciples, say, uh, sort of like think things are looking rough, so they decide to leave, sort of standing up the Usos. Roman Yikes. stands up, stares directly at Rollins while this is all happening. This results in Xavier Woods pinning Jay Uso. Damn. I thought I thought Roman was gonna like stare at Seth and like scare Seth into going back into the match. No, no. Like, don't you leave? No, these are two two egomaniacs at the moment, and uh, you know that's what that's what that happens. There's some some tension brewing. 
Get out, get out your coffee pots because there's, there's stuff brewing. Anyways, post Ooh. post match segment after the match, Edge basically grabs the microphone and says that about does it. Give us the title match this Sunday, Rollins. We want those tag titles. Rollins accepts, uh, and he and the disciples leave. I love it. So to confirm the Raw side of the card here, it is Edge and Daniel Bryan versus the Disciples for the Raw Tag Team Championship. Shayna Baszler versus Sony Deville for the Raw Women's Championship. Uh, an interesting match that I'm announcing just now. The Bloodline, Roman Reigns and the Usos versus the New Day in a six-man match. Uh, and then finally the Hell in a Cell, Aleister Black versus The Fiend. All right. So there we go. That's That's Monday Night Raw for you. I love it. Great show. I love a lot of the. I love the uh, the big the big ten man tag match. I like I like Rollins being like ah this isn't worth it anymore. <laughs> I like I like Alistair Black just like not even flinching at the Fiend being there, just like turning around and being like, oh hey, <laughs> oh hey, I can't wait to beat the snot out of you. And the Fiend's like, nah, not if I do it with my hurt hand. <laughs> my, got these hurt hands. Got these hurt hands. All of a sudden, both of his gloves say hurt, and it's like, oh no! <laughs> uh, I like the Hell in a Cell setup. I just, it's a great, it's a great go home show. I'll be honest. I feel like I, and this is my. I'm sound... surprised there was there wasn't very, there wasn't much Rhea Ripley uh, with with Morgan though. I wasn't there wasn't much of that storyline. No, I guess in a way, there's the sense that Liv Morgan was out here by herself, and we never even there was no acknowledgement. I'm sure a commentary talked about Rhea Ripley, but there was no. We see her watching the Mac, bat match backstage. She didn't come out. At with an awkward, Morgan or is it at an awkward angle? No, I'm saying that never happened. So no, oh, not at the dang. awkward angle because it didn't happen. Um, so like Rhea Ripley is just not like even on the show. So uh, there's something there, I guess. But uh, yeah, no, no Rhea Ripley. Weird. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I I feel like I'm. I'll be honest. I feel like I'm starting. I'm. You know how every once in a while, Mikey, you start hitting like what I would call a stride in booking. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I'm starting to hit it. I feel like I'm like I'm getting to a point where like okay, I got I'm building up like the new storylines and stuff, and I'm really enjoying it. But mm-hmm. I know for a fact that the draft is coming up, and I'm probably gonna lose, let's just say, half of my roster and be it's have them replaced. Knock you off your stride. Yes, I'm terrified of what this draft can do. Um. Because I'm sure there are people that you would like to take from Raw. Uh, yes. And I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll find all about that next week on Hit the Books. But until next week, until the beginning of Season 4 next week of the draft, we have one last show for Season 3, and that is Hell in a Cell this Sunday, folks. That's right. We have a full stacked nine-match card for you. We'll have the full episode, a special episode of Hit the Books out on this podcast feed. So you can go and check that out the moment it drops this Sunday. Again, that's Hell in a Cell this Sunday. Mikey, let's run over that card, why don't we? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, pop on over to uh pop on over to uh fucking Already there, buddy. Okay, I'm just making sure I didn't Lose all my stuff. Okay, making sure I'm hidden. I'm hiding all my Ryan, stuff from you. Ryan, can you can you see me? Ryan? Yes, I can. I can. Can you? Uh, so let's just run it down real quick, Mikey. What do we got? And no, right, this is got... in no particular order, obviously, folks. All right, we got Sabi Zayn and Humberto Carrillo versus Mustafa Ali and Cedric Alexander. Edge and Daniel Bryan versus the Disciples for the Raw Tag Team Championships. The Bloodline versus the New Day. Six man tag, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I really like six man tags. I don't know why. I feel like I do a lot of them. <laughs> uh, Alistair Black versus The Fiend in a Hell in a Cell match Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler versus Roger Strong and Kyle O'Reilly for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships Ember Moon versus Sasha Banks for the SmackDown Women's Championship Drew McIntyre taking on Adam Cole for the Universal Championship inside Hell in a Cell Then we have Kevin Owens versus Tommaso Ciampa for the United States Championship and a Tables match and last but not least, again, this is in no order, but last on this list. Yes. Is Shayna Baszler versus Sonya Deville for the Raw Women's Championship. That is correct. 
Shayna Baszler versus Sony Deville. Very excited for that matchup. And you can listen to all of the results on this show, on this episode, this pay-per-view episode, special episode of Hell in a Cell of Hit the Books this Sunday again. Uh, you can subscribe to this podcast feed or pod, you know, iTunes podcast app, I should say now, uh, Spotify, Stitcher, all those places. You can find all the the stuff there. Wherever you listen to podcasts, subscribe to Hit the Books now um, before changes are coming. Season four approaches. Approach is what's not approaches. I was trying to think of the uh, uh, yield English version of approaches. Appro- approach it. I mean, it would probably just be that, right? I probably. I don't know. What am I, a yield Englishman? Uh, yes, get up, sir. get up. <laughs> yes, sire. <laughs> um, but yes. So you can get all of that. Uh, if you like what you heard, um, there, yeah, I should we should say there's changes coming. F- stay tuned to our Twitter account. Make sure you're following. Make sure you're subscribed. If you are not, a lot of new stuff is coming down the pipeline. Mikey, what do you got to plug? Well, we got Independent Waters. Check that out every Wednesday where me and my friend Zach Batista take a trip down the independent wrestling seas and we find hidden gems for you to watch in the independent wrestling scene. So check that out every Wednesday. Uh, leave us that review on iTunes, five stars or more. And we do we, we did find our way back to the Tokyo Dome. We are hiding in that closet. So please leave it six stars and go check out the vlogs that we put out for the independent for uh, our trip to the collective. Me, Ryan, and Zach took a trip to the collective, and we will have episode one and two out tomorrow. Episode one is already out; two should be out tomorrow by the time this episode gets released. So go check those out. Episode one is us getting to indie, and episode two will be all about the wrestling. Yes, so go check that out. Yes, definitely go check that out. I would like to plug my brand new podcast. If you are subscribed to the Hit the Books uh, Network uh, podcast RSS feed, or if you're subscribed to our YouTube channel, you've seen it. If you if you follow us on Twitter, you've presumably seen it. Uh, I've announced a brand new podcast that's coming to this network. It is called G One and Only. Every other week, I will sort of review the performance of wrestlers that have performed in the G1 Climax only once. Uh, if you don't know, if you're New Japan illiterate, like some people are, that's not saying that's a bad thing in any capacity. But like if, me. if you are, the G1 Climax, Mikey, a summer tournament that has been going on for since 1991, every single year wow. since 1991. Uh, there are obviously people... It, it becomes, at this point, it's sort of like a round-robin tournament. Everyone, two... Uh, was it? Eight wrestlers... I think, or 10 wrestlers are in, I should know this. Oh, geez. It's embarrassing. I don't know it. Are in eight to 10 wrestlers are in separated into two blocks uh, of eight to 10 wrestlers each. I should say Uh, they all wrestle each other. The winners of those two blocks face each other. And that's the winner of the G1 climax. Most recently it was Kota Ibushi for the second year in a row. Um, But there've been plenty of people who've won it. Many people that have been in the G1 climax uh, hunt dozens of times. But there have only been a couple people, not a couple people, there's actually a decent number of people that have only been in the G1 Climax once. Uh, and that episode, the first ever episode of G1 and Only comes out this Monday. Uh, it is uh, about Big Van Vader and his 1991 G1 Climax performance. Uh, and his banger of a theme song. Oh my god, yes. His theme, <laughs> his theme is great. Uh, I, I think at the time of recording, Mikey, I think I'm almost done. I think I just have to record like a little outro bit and then I'm good. But, uh, yeah, that episode's almost done. I've already started starting producing episode two about nice. the, just about the whole of the 1992 G1 climax. Cause that has like 50% of the wrestlers that match. That was their one and only G1. So, uh, very excited about this new prospect of a podcast. It's going to be obviously a very short, you know, less than 30 episode podcast but uh i'm excited to do it i'm excited to do that so go check that out obviously subscribe uh g1 and only has their own rss feed obviously but obviously you can subscribe here the htp network uh and we got plenty of more announcements so check on monday as well for the biggest announcement and we'll talk about all that more biggest, the very biggest announcement for sure yes the biggest announcement of all time for this network uh is this monday so definitely follow us on twitter I say at the hit the books now, uh, but who knows? Um, Ooh, teasing. It's a little tease, I guess. Um, so go follow us there. Uh, until then, Mikey, 
that's it for this week's episode. Until then, folks, have a good one. Talk to you next time. We've got two words for you. Book it. Thank <laughs> you.